Well, for the very latest on this story, let's bring in Sarah Morris in Madrid. Sarah, you're just outside the courthouse where the trial's taking place. Tell us a bit more, first of all, about these charges Brian Ghali's facing. That's right, I'm outside the High Court in Madrid. And essentially, there are two cases uh, that uh, uh, the investigating magistrate will question uh, Brian Ghali on, and they involve allegations of genocide, murder, terrorism, torture and disappearances. Some of the allegations are being brought by uh, former members of the Polisario Front who say that uh, they were accused wrongly of being traitors to the Western Sahara movement and they were tortured in camps in Algeria where the Polisario Front is exiled. Uh, basically, the judge today uh, will have to determine uh, whether this case should go to trial or whether there is insufficient evidence. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, 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 Brian Ghali will not be in the court behind me. He will be giving uh, his answers to the questions at, uh, from his hospital bed uh, via a video link up. Now, he does have the option to not answer the judge's questions. Uh, judicial sources are telling El Pais he may choose uh, to answer those questions uh, uh, to cooperate with the court. He will deny wrongdoing. Uh, he may also uh, say that these charges are politically motivated, uh, brought by Morocco to discredit uh, him and the rest of the movement. And the judge uh, will have to decide uh, whether the case should go forward and whether the case uh, should go to trial. Uh, Sarah, give us a bit more context here about the Polisario Front and how his presence in Spain has really caused this <clears throat> diplomatic row with Morocco. Well, basically, Morocco considers uh, that it is a close ally of Spain. And uh, it says uh, that there would be uh, consequences, as they said, uh, for the uh, Polisario Front leader being accepted into a public hospital in northern Spain. Those consequences uh, came two weeks ago when essentially uh, Moroccan border guards loosened the border controls and allowed as up to uh, 10,000 migrants to flood into the uh, enclave, the Spanish-run city uh, of Ceuta. Uh, now, the city is still uh, reeling from the consequences of, of those migrants uh, flowing into the city. Uh, Morocco accepted most of the migrants uh, back, uh, but there's an estimated 1,000 adult migrants in the city still uh, to be identified and uh, to be processed uh, potentially for return to Morocco. There's also up to 1,000 children uh, under 18-year-olds who, under Spanish law, can't be sent back to Morocco and will have to be processed. And the war of words really between Spain and Morocco continues. Uh, yesterday, uh, the Moroccan foreign minister said that this was a long-standing uh, conflict, that Spain had been uh, wrong to not recognise uh, the Western Sahara as belonging to the Polisario Front, uh, sorry, as belonging to Morocco, which occupies uh, most of Western Sahara, and uh, compared the case even to the Catalan nationalists. He said that uh, Morocco had always uh, backed Spain in the fight against the Catalan separatists, and it was time for Spain uh, to back Morocco in this fight. Uh, the Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez of Spain, said that that was unacceptable and that uh, through policy, dis, uh, foreign policy disagreements, it was wrong uh, to disrespect Spain's borders. Sarah, thank you for that. Sarah Morris, they're reporting for us in Madrid. Thanks to her. Thanks to you for watching.